Good morning, New Beginnings. It's me, Pastor Danish House. Today is Monday, November 8th, 2021. Thank you so much for joining me for this daily update and devotional video. I'm glad you decided to make me part of your life today, and I'm delighted that you are part of my life as well. Well, today it's uh, the only thing on our calendar today, uh, our church calendar is a ministry team leaders meeting tonight at seven o'clock. Our ministry team leaders will gather together. They'll do some brainstorming for uh, this next year's budget tonight, and that'll be exciting. And um, yeah, I'm so grateful for the leaders that God has given us in this church. They're wonderful people, and they do such good work, and uh, they've been able to keep uh, so the fires burning uh, here at the church uh, during the long pandemic. And so I'm just very grateful for every one of them and their work uh, here at New Beginnings. Um, thank you, everybody, for uh, your birthday wishes. That was really wonderful. I had a great birthday on Saturday, wonderful time with my family and uh, and really enjoyed your birthday messages and cards. Thank you so much for that. Um, it was a wonderful birthday. Yeah, I'm 49. Still you know, wrestling with the idea of almost being 50, but um, I'm assured by those who've made it through that 50 is not as scary as I think it is. So that's good. Uh, also, thank you for your prayers for my uh, infection on my neck. Um, remember, if you were at the service yesterday, you remember that I started to talk about it and my wife and daughter were very clear, don't give details because it's gross. And so I'm not going to give you details, except to say that this morning I experienced some sudden relief uh, from it, which was really nice. Actually, it's cut the pain by about 50%, um, which makes it very much in the realm of manageable. So I'm hopeful. I'm going to schedule, try to schedule a doctor's appointment to have a doctor look at it, but I'm hopeful that uh, that, that release, let's say, uh, is uh, is bodes well for the future for this uh, this infection. So, yeah. So... Um, yesterday I preached on Zechariah chapter 10, Zechariah chapter 10, and it's a very interesting passage with lots of interesting stuff, and I can't wait to talk to about you, talk about it with you uh, this week. But um, it starts off with this very interesting bit about rain. Uh, Zechariah chapter 10 says, ask rain from the Lord in the season of the spring rain from the Lord who makes the storm clouds, and he will give them showers of rain to everyone, the vegetation in the field. There's a couple of things I want to point out here. One is, and I mentioned this on Sunday, that um, God promises to send rain to everybody here. Um, the, the Bible says uh, in other places that the Lord sends rain on the just and on the unjust. And uh, depending on how you look at that uh, passage, it could mean that, that good things happen to both the just and the unjust because rain is nourishing to the ground, or that bad things happen to the both uh, righteous and the, uh, the just and the unjust because, uh, you know, rain can spoil your picnic, let's say. Um, we, we use a, f a phrase in our culture, I don't want to rain on your parade, right? There's this idea that rain at an inopportune time can be a, a, a disappointing thing. But either way, God sends rain on the just and on the unjust. And here, God is saying, look, pray to me for rain. Don't pray to those, um, those false gods. They cannot provide rain for you. Um, they cannot provide rain for you. Well, the, the Lord says this in a lot of different places. Um, Psalm 135 verse 7 says, He it is who makes the clouds rise at the end of the earth who makes lightnings for the rain and brings forth the wind from his storehouses. Jeremiah 14, verse 22 says, Are there any among the false gods of the nations that can bring rain? Or have the heavens give showers? Are you not he? O Lord our God, we set our hope on you, for you do all these things. This idea that the false gods cannot send rain, but God can. Well, how does that work? Uh, and I want to talk just a little bit today about the doctrine of concurrence, the doctrine of concurrence. Um, and to get into that, I want to just ask this question. If, if you're a Christian and you go to college to study meteorology and you want to be faithful to the gospel, and so you go, you learn everything that they teach you, and you go to meteorology school, and on uh, you get your first job, as a, as, a, as a TV weather person, right? And you stand up there as a faithful Christian, uh, 
what do you say when there's rain in the forecast? Do you say, well, it looks like God is going to send rain on Wednesday? Um, do you say, well, the forecast says it's sunny, but who knows, God could send rain, right? Uh, how, how much does our faith in God affect the way that we think about meteorology, right? Is, is, is meteorology, is there such a thing as a Christian meteorologist? Does a Christian meteorologist have access to the same tools that a secular meteorologist has? Or, or, do, or do, does a Christian meteorologist say, well, whatever the Lord decides will be the rain, will be the weather? Um, I think that there is definitely a lot that a Christian can do in meteorology. A Christian can be a fine, competent, faithful, scientific meteorologist. Um, when uh, there was a famine in Israel in 1 Kings 18, and uh, God was, uh, there was a, because there was a drought, and God was punishing King Ahab for his sins. And Elijah um, had a contest on Mount Carmel against the prophets of Baal. Um, Elijah defeated the prophets of Baal, and he said that because the people of Israel were now turning their hearts towards the Lord, God was going to send rain. Uh, but of course, God was going to send rain. Uh, that meant that uh, Elijah expected there to be clouds. So he sends uh, his servant up to the, the uh, top of, uh, of the mountain. He says, look out to the sea. What do you see? And the servant says, I see a cloud coming. And, and Elijah says, all right, well, get ready to run because there's rain coming, right? So clouds are definitely involved in rain uh, for the Christian as well as for the non-Christian. Job 36 verses 27 and 28 says, for he draws up the drops of water, they distill his mist in rain, which the skies pour down and drop on mankind abundantly. That's the water cycle, right? God draws up the drops of water, they distill in the clouds and they come down as rain. That's the water cycle is, is there in the probably the first book of the Bible ever written, the book of Job. Uh, the doctrine, the Christian doctrine of concurrence says, and I think it's an important one for us to know, the Christian doctrine of concurrence says that God uses means. God uses means. God does things in our world, but at times, and most of the time, he uses means, pre-existing pre conditions that God influences or has influenced to bring about his purposes at his time. Uh, sometimes, of course, God is able to intervene supernaturally and without means do his work. We believe that God created the, the universe at the word of his command. Okay, We don't, we don't believe the universe uh, has always existed. We believe that God created the universe uh, by a sovereign act of his mighty power. Um, we believe that God created Jesus in the womb of Mary by a divine act of his sovereign power, um, probably uh, probably creating a fertilized ovum or, or creating the, the fertilization for the ovum inside Mary's womb. Um, but regardless of exactly how it happened, there was no father uh, to provide the remaining genetic material. Jesus was created in Mary's womb. That was a supernatural act of creation. God heals supernaturally, does things that, uh, that that are not sort of according to the normal course of events. But the doctrine of concurrence says that God most often acts in this world through means, through detectable means. That when a Christian meteorologist goes uh, and looks at their weather radar, right, and studies the barometric pressure and the high pressure systems and the low pressure systems and the jet stream and all that jazz, and they plug it into their computer model, um, that that they are looking at the hand of God at work. Um, and that uh, it is not unfaithful to say that there's a high pressure system coming in, so there's going to be sunny weather. Uh, it's not unfaithful to say that. Like a Christian doesn't have to say there's gonna be sunny weather, uh, but you never know what God's gonna do. Well, you do never know what God's gonna do. I mean, God, God is so certainly sovereign and capable of doing whatever he wants to do. But we live in a world in which God typically uh, uses means. God is the one who created the systems and set them up, and God's the one who, who empowers the systems to operate in a logical manner. 
I had an interesting conversation with an atheistic professor uh, last Tuesday. We were talking about uh, mathematics as a math professor. And he said, I, I asked him, what do, you, what do you love about math? And he said, I, you know, what really gets me is uh, that I, I still don't understand how it is that math, this thing we do in our minds, actually describes actual occurrences in the physical universe so well. That's the thing that just boggled his mind. It's beautiful to see how um, how math, which is really an intellectual exercise, um, actually winds up helping us understand the world. It describes something real in the in the universe. And that's because the God who created the universe is logical and rational and created the universe so it can be comprehended. Another example of the doctrine of concurrence, and this will be quick, is how were you born? Uh, childbirth, right? How, how are ch children conceived? Uh, well, we believe that, you know, mommy and the daddy are in love and, and a sperm goes in to fertilize the ovum, right? And from that, you know, there's, there's chromosomes and there's X and Y and, and uh, genetic material and new DNA is created and boom, you know, with, from the union of those two uh, gametes comes uh, the, the fertilized ovum and, and becomes, uh, becomes a, a person, right? Psalm 139.13 says, For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. Well, what was doing that? Was it God knitting you together in your, in your mother's womb? Or was it the, the actions of you know, cellular division that knit you together in your mother's womb? The answer is yes, right? Was it God who sent the rain or, or was it the jet stream? Yes. Uh, God uses means. Um, and that, what that means is that when we pray, sometimes the answer to our prayers comes through supernatural, unexpected ways. But sometimes, I'd say more often, the answer to our prayers comes through the ordinary actions of the world that God created to work in a certain way. And that's just as much the work of God as a supernatural intervention. The doctrine of concurrence. It's a very powerful doctrine. I want to encourage you to give it some thought today as you look at the world around you. Um, is God active in the everyday processes of this world? I believe the answer is yes. And it's the eyes of faith that see God at work every day. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for your love for us. Thank you for the fact that you do your work in this world every single day, sometimes through very dramatic supernatural manifestations and sometimes through the quiet, ordinary work of a world that you created good and still, even though it's fallen, still operates according to the principles that you built into it. Lord, it is a wonder that we are part of this world and a world that you created. And Lord, we are grateful every day for the air that we breathe, for the, the trees that we get to see and sit under, for the sun that gives us warmth, um, for the rain that waters the earth. Lord, that rain comes from you and we're grateful for it even as you use the water cycle and, and uh, high pressure systems and low pressure systems in order to deliver it. We thank you for every blessing that comes from your hand. We thank you for healing that comes from your hand. We thank you for children who come from your hand. We thank you for everything that you have provided. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you for joining me for this daily update and devotional video. I love you, New Beginnings, and I look forward to talking to you again tomorrow.